It's Australia's oldest food export, yet most Australians have never eaten it and wouldn't even recognise it. The sea cucumber is a traditional Chinese delicacy that was harvested by Macassan fishermen off Arnhem Land for hundreds of years. Australian researchers now believe this bizarre sea creature could help struggling shrimp farmers in central Vietnam. Kerry State reports on an unlikely saviour for Vietnamese aquaculture. As dawn breaks over the central coast of Vietnam, beaches turn into seafood banquets as the fishing community arrives. The divers catch more than enough to make a moggy's mouth water. And among the more curious looking creatures up for sale is an assortment of sea cucumbers. They normally live on rocks or under the sand in water up to seven metres deep. I dive with a torch and when I see them, I catch them. But finding the slow movers is not as simple as it once was. There used to be a lot before I started diving, but now they're rare and I only find them from time to time. Throughout the tropics, sea cucumbers have been very heavily fished and there's been this move from one species to another. So the most valuable species get fished out, they move to the next species down the chain and so on. And maybe 10 or 15 years ago, there might have been four market species that they could fish and get money for, but now there's 20 species. They're sort of going further and further down the chain and finding value in more and more as the, as the valuable species disappear. Got some good brood stock. To provide an alternative source of sea cucumbers, Australian scientist Dave Mills is working with Vietnam's aquaculture experts to farm these surprisingly fascinating animals. If you learn a bit about the biology, they really are quite bizarre. For example, if it's attacked, it can throw up its entire intestine and uh, while there's this little pile there for the predator to, to feed on, it just buries or moves away slowly and uh, over the next few months it can regenerate its whole digestive tract and so that's, that's a pretty amazing quality. For the last decade, staff at this hatchery north of Nha Trang have been fine-tuning technology to achieve this. Reliable batches of baby beche de mer, as they're sometimes called, that can be transferred to commercial farms. The biggest challenge in a country with a significant wet season is keeping inland ponds salty enough for these sea dwellers. In the early years there were considerable problems. People basically didn't know how sensitive sea cucumbers were going to be to these changes in salinity and quite a few uh, crops of sea cucumbers were lost due to drops in salinity. It's not a difficult solution, it's just about managing the, the water in the pond in a different way. North of the hatchery is a man who has found a bit of extra pond management goes a long way. Phat Van Huan is one of the country's first sea cucumber farmers, swapping from shrimp to the more sedate species. Before I farmed sea cucumbers, I didn't have enough money to build a house. But after changing to sea cucumbers, I was able to. I also bought a bed, a wardrobe, a washing machine, a fridge and a motorbike. The father of two says sea cucumbers have given him a more secure future at a time when disease is destabilising the once dominant shrimp industry. It's what we call a boom and bust industry. One country will start farming, uh, they'll go through this exponential growth where they, they're producing a lot of shrimp and then disease will, will tend to set in and that can, can really knock them about. So for some of the farmers here, if they grow three crops over a year, they may find two of them are wiped out. 
Add to that a drop in shrimp prices because of greater global competition, and these rather unsightly squirmers are looking a lot more attractive. When I changed to sea cucumbers, I made about two to three hundred million dong a year. When I farmed shrimp, there wasn't much of a profit. I usually only made a few million dong a year, and sometimes I made a loss. Farmers are focusing on the most valuable species, sandfish. The creatures don't need feeding as they slurp up the sediment at the bottom of the ponds. But when they reach a marketable size at about 12 months, the gutting has to be thorough to remove all the gunk. Early on, there was some reluctance by the market as well. You know, this is a new form of, of sea cucumber. It's a, it's a very traditional market because you know it, it's a Chinese traditional product and they, they know what they want and they know what they've had over the years. So really you have to show that the new product is as good as the old product. One local buyer who processes and sells sea cucumbers into that traditional market is Boi Ti Ta. She started 35 years ago when demand and prices were poor and all her product came from the wild. Now she relies on farms to satisfy a growing customer base with the wild and cultured cucumbers fetching the same price. It doesn't matter how much is produced, it's all marketable. Even thousands of tongs, because there are now more customers from China. The market price for dried sea cucumber can top $200 a kilo. Its popularity stems from its supposed medicinal properties and reputation as an aphrodisiac. As far as the taste goes, well, according to this novice, it doesn't have much of one. It's more of a flavour absorber. OK, taste it? OK, I'll taste it. OK, you can taste it. OK, okay here we go. Okay. How does it taste? I kind of thought I'd hate it, so... <laughs> this is the first time. It's OK. Oh. It's... You can taste the mushroom really strongly, so I don't know if I can really taste the sea cucumber. Yeah, it is salty, then. No more. It's good, it's good for your health. It's good for my health. Yeah. I might have to just have another piece. Yeah. Sea cucumbers are yet to take Vietnam's aquaculture industry by storm. But researchers say there's a definite swell of support as producers weigh up the risks and rewards. There's a small number of farmers involved. At the moment there's around about 15 between a couple of provinces in central Vietnam. Uh, some of them have been involved for up, for up to five years when the Research Institute for Aquaculture started working with some farmers to trial the technology those farmers have been quite successful. So there is quite a high demand for juvenile sea cucumbers to grow in, in ponds now. It's, it's just, I guess, at a stage where it's starting to take off. Father of seven, Chan Van Hu, is one of the latest converts to the cucumber. After a 90% survival rate for his first crop, he's doubled his investment this year. I can make more money from shrimp than sea cucumbers, but shrimp farming is very hard work. Sea cucumbers are easy and I can produce a lot. I can buy the seed for only 3,000 dong and six to eight months later, at harvest, I can sell each sea cucumber for 10,000 dong. But this 30-year veteran of the shrimp industry isn't replacing the crustacean with the cucumber. He's going to alternate between the two. And the unlikely pairing could turn out to be a perfect match. What happens over the years when shrimp are grown in a pond is you get this build-up of organic material in the sediment. If it's just left, it becomes toxic. So after a time, the ponds just become unusable. So 
Introducing sea cucumbers, they have this ability to eat organic material out of the sediment. So this is beneficial for the ponds because you don't get this horrible build-up of organic material. And the farmers can just put the sea cucumbers in the ponds and they don't have to feed them. Back at the hatchery, Dave Mills and leading local researcher Mr Zui are testing to see whether farmers can get even better value out of their ponds by growing both species at the same time. In theory, the shrimp would prosper in the water above, while the sea cucumbers clean up and fatten up below. But early experiments in tanks have found it's not exactly a marriage made in heaven. What we found in these tank trials we, we uh, conducted was largely that when the shrimp get very big, they will physically attack the sea cucumbers. In fact, the shrimp grew extremely well, and perhaps the shrimp were getting some benefit from feeding on the sea cucumbers as well. We're not sure about that yet, but it, it's clear that it, it was definitely um, a problem for the sea cucumbers. We had low survival and low growth rates when there were large shrimp in the tank. He's still hopeful, though, the species can coexist. So for this six-month trial, they're giving the sea cucumbers a fighting chance by adding fewer shrimp. As well as cleaning shrimp farms and making them more profitable, one of the long-term goals out here is to start rebuilding wild stocks by shifting sandfish raised inland back to sea. It's an idea that's also being investigated several thousand kilometres away at the Darwin Aquaculture Centre. These slugs have been brought ashore to spawn thousands of juveniles, which will be marked, released into the ocean, and then harvested a year or so later. It's called sea ranching, an approach to aquaculture which reduces infrastructure costs for farmers while potentially benefiting fisheries. In Australia, we still are not sure whether this can be a, a viable industry on a large scale. And this is what this research that we're doing is all about. It, it's doing an experimental level release of animals, monitoring their growth and survival, and then putting that information into a, a broad economic analysis of the operation. So it's still to be proven overseas, and I think in, it's a case in Australia as well. Now there's another level from that as well, is that these animals, when you put them out there, should spawn. And so through providing these, putting these animals back in the wild, you're, you're enhancing the stock that's already out there. While the young animals are fed a special brew here, 